was uh, I was preaching today. I was going, I was preaching today about the hurting steps, and I was set and and uh, for once I was uh, I was ahead, and and I was resting and I thought I was going to get a weekend uh, to myself, and on Friday night. I, uh, God is speaking to me in the middle of the night now because uh, I think it's because he can't get me attention any other time. Uh, and so he's speaking to me in the middle of the night and, and uh, it, it, it's, it's always around five and so I was just lying there and all, all excited about my message and he says, I, I, I want you to camp on this place of hearing the voice. And I, w- I wasn't really happy about that because I- I've just finished my, I'm doing my hurting steps, Lord, and I'm done. And I don't want to be, and this is Friday. And, uh, and you know, there was, a, there was just a moment when I, I felt the anger of God. And it's like, hands up, hands up who, I, my dad is a wonderful, kind man. He would give you the shirt of his back. He's a lovely man. He's a good man. But you see, when I was coming home late, later than I should have been, I'm telling you, I, I, you see that boy coming down them stairs and that white hair and his PJs? It was something to be scared about. Okay? And it was Lorraine's fault. She kept me out all the time. And... Uh, and so I had to go home with that. So, so look, there's another side to a father. And it's a good thing because it'll keep you out of stuff that you shouldn't be in. Oh, come on. It'll keep you out of stuff that you shouldn't be in. And so there's, a, there's the other side of God and that, uh, that side that will keep you from stuff. And so, you know, here's God and me talking to everybody about walking on the steps. And the first step I have to take, I'm going, no, I'm not doing it. So I just believe that God will breathe in us today. We're going to make a declaration today. Okay, stand, everybody stand. We're going to make a declaration. This is a huge declaration that we're going to make today. Absolutely huge. Exodus 20, verse 3. I will have no other gods before him. Do you know what that means? It means to love something more than God. Oh, dear. That's not so sure. Come on. Let's do it one more time. I'm glad you said that. Thank you. You may sit down. Okay, Acts chapter 27. Okay, in your Bibles, if you go there, Acts chapter 27. Uh, so God hasn't finished on this whole prayer and fasting thing. He, he's not done yet I uh, and he wanted me come on this one thank God today that we have a God that will wait on you because he was saying Jeff Saunders others are not yet in there's still some out there that I need to get and so thank God this morning that we have a God that will wait on you Paul is a prisoner on a ship and it's, he's bound for Rome. He warns the ship's master not to sail. He, the word said, don't go, Paul. But Paul and Paul perceives that this voyage would end with disaster. Here Paul is using his spiritual organs of perception to hear the unction and sensing of Holy Spirit in his communion with Holy Spirit. But nevertheless, his centurion guard uh, who had him captive was more persuaded by the helmsman uh, and the guy running the ship than by the things spoken by Paul and by the word of God that Paul had spoken. And so the majority decided uh, to set sail. 
in spite of what Paul was saying. <clears throat> now they were following in the steps of their own thinking. These were experienced sailors, and so they were going by their human reasoning. It looks okay. This ship will make it. We're we're okay. Their own experience says. Church, that won't get you and me through the troubles of Noah's days and Lot's days combined. Normal is not coming back, but Jesus is. They were following in the steps of their thinking. And after many days of being driven by the storm and the boat is shaken and the nails on the boards of the ship floor are beginning to break off. Ping, ping. You like the sound effects of that, did you? Bing, bing. And they're, they're breaking off. And, and so they are so afraid of the ship that's beginning to break up. And they start to throw the tackle, the very tackle of the ship overboard so that they don't sink. And by verse 20, we read this. Now, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small tempest beat upon us, all hope Say all hope. All hope that would be that we would be saved was finally given up. And I don't know, I th- this was Luke who was writing this thing, and I don't know whether he was doubting at the time himself, uh, but the, the, and, and thinking, oh my goodness, there is no hope. We will, we're not going to make this. Because they had disobeyed the voice of the Lord and his servant. He had a word from God. And so <clears throat> in, in verse 21, uh, I wonder today, is there somebody here and you don't know which way to turn? And the tempest around you is so dark and it's deafening and, 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 and life is dark and black and it's hard to know and get direction in your life when, when the skies over you are dark. These men... <clears throat> Are, are lost <coughs> and have lost all hope and everybody stood back because it's cool well let's see let's see what Paul says verse 21 strangely Paul goes into a, a long fast like we're, we're singing Paul <coughs> we're going down Paul you would think he would need to be eating and getting his body in his shape for swimming and, and, and Paul is, suddenly goes into this fast. You see, he's not looking at the natural. He's not looking at his circumstances. He's not looking at the waves. He's not looking at the wind and, and the darkness. He's looking to hear from God for his circumstance. God has told him and he must t- testify in Rome. And Paul now goes into a time of prayer and fasting because it's not looking good. How many have been in that place before where, you know what, we'll have to go back. And so he, he sharpens himself and he gets prepared to ask God again, uh, what, Lord, what's happening? And he starts to seek God and hear from the God who is actually ordering his steps. Okay, I, I want you to understand, Paul's steps are ordered. Okay, they're ordered of the Lord. And yet, he's supposed to be going to Rome, and yet they think he's singing. And so let's read together Acts 27, verse 21 to 26. It should come up on the screen. But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar, and indeed God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men. For I believe, God, that it will be just 
as it was told me. Sometimes the things that we sail on and the things that we are chasing after are destined to break up. But know that God can land you safely, even if it's on a broken piece of driftwood. And if we can just get to hear him, if we can just get to hear him, if we can just get a word on our situation and on our circumstance. You see, it's not what happens to us that matters. It's what we understand is happening to us that matters. We've got to understand where we're for. And so we need a word from God. If things are foggy for you right now, seek the Lord. You see, get a word on your situation. We can make it on a little piece of faith. Come on, how good is that? Come on, because my faith isn't that big all the time. But we can make it on just a little piece of faith. Just a little bit. And there might be a little bit of fear in there too. Are there any honest Christians in here today? But I tell you what, perfect love will drive out all fear. And so we can do this fearless. Just as God said they would, they make it. And so God tells his secrets to his friend, Paul. He gives his secret to his friend, but not to his acquaintances. And so your safest and most protected and most fearless direction in this life is following Jesus and his steps with the friendship of God, the Holy Spirit, to guide you and lead the way. Sometimes life will hand you things you just have to go through. You just have to go through them. They just, they just hand it. And yet, we wonder why. This is God's servant. This is Paul. This is probably one of the main characters in the scriptures in the New Testament. He's cold. He's absolutely exhausted. He's hanging on to a piece of driftwood in the, in the middle of a raging sea. And he has a right to ask, what is going on here? But he had a word from God to hold on to. Do you understand? And it's that word from God will bring you your peace. Okay, and there was an, an, island wood, or an island of people on Malta that had to hear about Jesus. Okay, and I want you to see what's happening here. So, so he has a word from God that he's going there. As circumstances arise that says, you know what, you're not going to get there. But he has a word from God. He's passing. He hears God. He takes that word from God. The ship sinks, but God has them left on an island. And he's able to witness to the whole island. And so we, we recognize Roman 8, Romans 8, 28, which says, all things work together for good. Come on. Are you understanding, what, you understanding how God works? Sometimes the ship will go down, but there's a reason and a purpose on the other side of that. There's somebody that needs to hear about God and Jesus. Okay, and, and, and we can be all head up about it, but we've got to trust them in the storm. There is, a, there is one week left for you to join us in this prayer time and fasting. Even it's only one hour a day for the rest of the week. And, and, and let that maybe be the first time you've ever done this. But, but brothers and sisters, have a go. Don't miss this. Look, there's, there's no future in sin. There's no future in sin. There's no future in that thing that you is, is, is separating you out from doing this with God. I don't know what the barrier is. I don't know what your wall is. I don't know what your offense is. I don't know. But uh, there's no future in it. But there's a future in Jesus. There's eternal life in Jesus. And so grab hold of this. Take this wee opportunity. I, I, because I understand sometimes the only thing we need and have to hold on to is God's word over our life. 
So let me ask you a question. Who and what is ordering your steps? Are you wandering aimlessly? You're working out experiences and, and human reasoning and maybe you've been doing trickery your whole life and everybody, boy, we were lucky with that one, weren't we? And it's full of luck. It's full of luck. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's your horoscope or the daily meal. And the problem with the stars is that when it's that dark, you can't see the stars. And not only that, you can't have a relationship with the stars. But you can have a relationship with a God that loved you. And so we have that opportunity. That's his desire for you and for your life and for your family. God is trying to get your attention. Okay, you ruined my weekend. Because God, somebody in here, God is looking to get their attention. Ruin my weekend, another weekend, just because there's somebody in here that God is looking to get your attention for to come with us on this journey. God is trying to get your attention. He wants to lead you through life. He wants to lead you through your ups and your downs. And it's amazing how much energy we'll spend exercising. How much energy we'll spend exercising the part of us that's going to die. And not the spirit that's going to live forever. God wants to shepherd you, protect you, get you to the grassiest parts of life. And if you will follow in his steps and not your steps, his steps, because he's a good shepherd. He's a good shepherd. He says in John 10, 27, 20, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them. I know them. And they follow me. And, and so if you weren't here Wednesday night, I want to give you four things. Where's your pens and papers? I need to give you four things that you will help you to hear God. Number one, set an appointment to meet with him. Okay? It's a bit like a date night. Okay, set an appointment, a time, a place, and a meeting place, and allow time for each other. We will make time for what we value and desire. Okay, there's some people who spend an hour a day in a gym, and there's nothing wrong with that. You should do that. I would need to do that. But if it's a choice between an hour in the gym and an hour with Jesus, make a right choice. We can't afford to not be. Okay, so uh, uh, number two, be still and quiet your mind. Okay, shut out the noise of the day, the anxious parts of the day. Focus on God. Fill your mind with the things of God. This is not Eastern, an Eastern religion or meditation that we do. Okay, an Eastern meditation will say clear your mind. Okay, and Buddha will fill it. Clear your mind and put it off. If you clear your mind, you're opening yourself up to a spirit. And so the Bible, biblical meditation is completely different. Biblical meditation is taking on the mind of Christ. You take on the thinking of your God. And it's that that you work out of. And so don't be clear in your mind. Fill your mind with the things of God. <clears throat> And follow in his steps. <clears throat> God is trying to reveal himself to you. He, he's, he's in a way trying to date you. I thought we remember dating the, 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 your first night. Me and Lorraine, I, had, I shouldn't be doing it. Me and Lorraine, hey, we were our first, I know she's going, don't be doing, don't be doing, she's going this year. Our first night was in, uh, uh, what do you, uh, <laughs> do you remember the first night? <laughs> Our first night was in the, uh, the Dury Road, and we sat outside the, you know, the Congregational Church and the Dury Road, and we sat, I sat on the wall, and, and she stood over me, and we kissed. Such a great place. Such a great, and then we went to the People's Park, and we'll not talk about that. Let's move on. Okay. But look, we had a, we had a wonderful time. But I, we had a wonderful time. Wonderful time. So in a way, he's trying, look, he's trying to, he already knows all your secret sins. He already knows you. And so don't be hiding from him. You can't hide from him. 
This is a God who has already known you, still went on a cross. So you don't have to hide that stuff. He's quite aware of it. And you will make some great memories together with, with God uh, as you begin to follow in his steps. And his friendship is conditional. It's conditional on John 15 and 14. You're my friends if you do whatever I command you. He's looking at friendship with you, but there's things that you have to do as if. Some of my best memories in life are on holiday with Lorraine and with the Waynes. We have had such good fun on holidays. Boy, we, we, like, we, we, we don't really argue ever. We, we just have some real good fun and we have m- memories that we laugh at still of some of the stuff that went on in holidays. Beautiful scenery. We've been blessed. We, went, we were in the Rockies one time with white mountain tops and, and blue, blue lakes surrounding them and trees and blue lakes that match the color of our eyes. And, and I was wondering, what was it about those days that make them sweet? And as amazing as the views were, they merely, they merely were like peas in the side of the plate. You know, they garnished the plate were the views, but it was the company. The sparkling eyes, the laughter, the fun, the, the joking around, and the hearts that you were connected to and connected with, these made the memory special. It was the lady that made the lake. I'm getting some brownie points tonight. Hey, I, 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 that, that's what made the moment. It's whom you're with that matters. It's who you step out in this life with. And and I've made some great memories with God, just as I have with my family. He and I have, we have have laughed together. We we have wept together, grieved together. He and I have, we have walked together. How, How can two walk together unless they be agreed? There's been days when we've agreed and there's days I disagreed. But he always stood there. We ain't normally coming back to where I left. And if you're looking for Jesus today, he's back where you left him. That's where you're going to find him, right back where he left him. He won't chase after you, but you can come right back. He's waiting on you. Okay. And so there were times when we sung songs. Oh, I love, love doing love songs. I'm sorry. I, 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 I like the old songs. Is there any support for old songs? There's, there's Peter Dickey going, are we? Here we go, here we go. Is there any more so- support for old songs? My, my wife's going, no, 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 no. And it's so, yeah, look, we've, we've done love songs together that touched my heart and made me weep and made me cry together. And I've been, I, I, I've been so far away from him that, you know, I thought he had abandoned me. And, and, uh, but I've also literally heard his voice booming where I had to look up to see where he was. And I was only happy, but that's, that was it. I've heard his whispers. Seen his miracles. I've, I've miracles in my own body. I, I used to have Crohn's disease. I, I don't have Crohn's disease anymore. I, God healed me of Crohn's disease. Do you, do you, I don't know where you know He healed me of Crohn's disease. Only he can do stuff like that. And uh, he recorded my greatest failures with, with walking with the Lord. And I've literally felt his touch on my shoulder and the great peace has just flooded right through my whole spirit. And he's more than a being. He's more than a power. He, he's a friend. Uh, to only have been his acquaintance in this life would have been a tragedy. Uh, just to be an acquaintance of God, you know, turn up church. Uh, that would have been a tragedy to have missed those memories with him. 
And not only does God value the friend place that I have with him, but he's desperate for one with you. So much so he would wreck my weekend for. He's desperate for one with you. He wants to speak with you. Uh, listen, listen to him as he speaks to a, a lukewarm church in the book of Revelation. Listen, listen to him. He said, behold, I stand at the door. That door's your heart. I, I stand at the door and I knock. And I'm saying, if any man, if any man hear my voice and open the door, he says, I, I come in to him and I will sup with him. I, I'm going to have dinner with him. And he with me. That's relationship. The Almighty God, the great I am, requests the pleasure of your company. RSVP. You can have one today. And I believe there's somebody here who needs one and wants one. And you're waiting on it, an RSVP. He's asking you out for a friendship date, over a meal together. And it's not f- for short moments, it's over a meal. It's, inter- it's interesting to know that God knocks on the door. I suppose God could probably blow the door down or just, just walk through it. But that would be an intrusion into your will and into your space. And God does not do that. He will wait till he is invited into your space and into your life. It's the devil that busts down the door. He's out to kill, steal, and destroy. And so God wants to be celebrated and not tolerated in your life. Not right? He just he wants the he wants your heart. He wants your love. And if it's not the love, he's not that's what he's after. Jesus is saying to us, let me into your life and into your family. Let's dine as friends. Let's be have time together, not rushing about. Let's plan the day together. And that way we learn to be friends with God on a personal level. And to do that, we have to have spiritual senses. We have to hear him. We have to hear his voice and recognize his voice. We have an organ of perception that is at the new birth connected directly with Holy Spirit. Joined together with him. Talking with God is not a gift for the special. I said talking with God is not a gift for the special. It's a learned art by reason of use. And if you will take the time to listen, you will learn to allow God to speak into your spirit and direct you. And eventually his mind will become your thoughts. And he'll give you the desires in your heart. He'll give you the desires in your heart. And when he does that, there'll come a place where it breaks forth right into your soul. And and suddenly your mind will become like his mind. And we take on the mind of Christ in our life. And so the steps of the Lord following in his steps is easy because we're in his will all the time. And we're walking with him and we're talking with him. And we, we know where we're going because we have a word that gives light to our feet and a lamp to our path or the other way about you. I'm not sure. Do you understand what I'm saying? If any man hears my voice, he says, and so action will determine whether or not we hear from him. That's something to think about today. Sensitivity or perception or insight is learned. It's developed like tuning into a frequency in a radio. Do you know the radio, surprisingly, all of them, all of that stuff's going through the air right now. It's all speaking. But I don't hear it until I tune into it. You've got, you've got to get to the dial. You've got to get to that place of tuning in to hear God. And see, a lot of my prayer times, I don't know about yours, but I, certainly a lot of my prayer time has been spent telling God how I'm going to do it and how he's going to back me up in it. And I found out, you know what? He don't go there. God has a way in which he wants it done. And so we've got to hear God. We can't just go off on our own. We have to hear God and walk in his steps. And, and the reason that God could do it and fix it and like that, but he's interested in the relationship with you. So that together 
we work in harmony and work together in accomplishing the plan and will of God. And if we aren't expecting him to speak back, I wonder, is God just waiting for, for us to let him speak? You know, maybe, you, maybe when you're praying, that's, it's just a list of things that you're looking done and need done and have to have. And God is looking, whoa, 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 whoa hold on, just wait a minute. I, can I say something? I know you're off doing your thing, but can I say a wee thing? Where are all the Adams? Where are all the men today? I, this is so important for us, particularly for us, because Adam hid from God. He, Adam hid from God. He, he was full of shame. And so rather than face God, he hid. And there's so many of us hiding from God because, you know, we've got secret sins, guys. And, we, and, and what happens is we're ashamed of them. And you should be because there's no future in sin. And, and, and God still comes along, no one, but he provides a covering for him. He provides Jesus for your sin. But he's wanting rid of it because there's no future in it for you. And it'll destroy your life. And so he's wanting it out and he's wanting it clear. But anyway, Adam's still hiding. And, and, and in a way, he's saying, it was, I'll let my wife get on with the stuff with God. I'll let her do the spiritual stuff. I'll let her do the praying and I'll get, she can go to the midweek and do all that stuff there around here. But, and I'll just go home with getting things done around here and doing the garden and getting things and earning the wages and looking after everything and all that. That's what I'll do. Just like in the garden when he fell. Because Adam was out and not close enough as he should be. Our hearts have to be an open door to welcome him, to dine and dialogue with us. And he wants to make memories with you. Like some great my heart. See that boy there, that boy, that boy Barry sitting there, Pastor Barry. Oh, we got some memories. And Dream Center over in California. That was uh, one of the highlights. Oh, talk about God. Talk about meeting God. Talk about a, a time and memories. And I mean, I'm time, I'm time, but oh, I, it's the first time I had ever seen people casting demons out of folk. It's the first time I ever seen uh, uh, people getting filled with the Spirit of God and starting to speak in tongues. And I wasn't having any of this. And I was worried because they were young. They were young. I was the old boy and I was looking after them and, and they were wanting to pray for them and they were laying hands on Pastor Barry and, and I was, well, I'm not doing that. Not. And I stood right in the middle of it so that they wouldn't do any hokey pokey on them. <laughs> and I was just standing there and, and uh, here then, uh, uh, Barry, he's, uh, and, and uh, flags away, uh, they're all both away. And, and uh, then they, they said, would you like us to pray for you, sir? Uh, yes. <laughs> and so I, I, they laid hands on me and prayed, me, no, I'm ham. And so they called over this other woman that was, this woman, I don't know who she was, but they called over this other woman and they said, waved her over and she came over and she laid hands on me and says, oh, we have a stern one here. I don't know where you can see my eyes and my glasses, but... And so she prayed for me. Oh. And it just started. It started welling up and inside. And do you ever, you know, going down in the spirit? I just went down like a plank on the floor. And I think God was trying to make fun of me because I fell with my leg in the air. <laughs> I fell with my leg in the air, like flat. And that leg stayed up for two and a half hours. And I knew it was there. <laughs> and I knew it was sticking up. And the, uh, by the time, I com the time I decided to come out, everybody had left and we'd went down the street. And I was there and the, with just a few lights on on my own. They left me. You left me. <laughs> and... 
and I didn't want to come out. I didn't want to come out of the presence of God. And if you've ever tried to hold your leg up for two and a half hours, it's not possible. Just like somebody holding it. Man, you need these experiences with God. You'll never forget those. I'll never forget you left me. <laughs> but it was awesome. And that's what God's looking for with you, brothers and sisters. If you're not saved today, that's what he's looking for from you. And let me close. I said to you earlier on that there's two sides to that. There's that loving, kind, and merciful side. But there is also the other side. I, I thank God that we have a wrestling God that will fight for you. And you know what? As Isaac understands, sometimes you'll end up with a limp. And I don't know whether he should have wrestled with God or not. I don't think it was sensible. But he'll end up with a limp because he wrestled. And God says, I've had enough of this. Time to move on here. And so there's another side to God. And so let's read Matthew 24 and verse 50 just as we close. Just as we close. You're listening well. Jesus says that the master of the servant, sorry, I've got that wrong. Is it come up on the screen? Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? That's one of the verses of my call to give you food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two. And appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We're, we're talking about a servant. That this isn't somebody that doesn't know God. This is a servant. But but he's clueless about what's going on. He's not in communion. And so he's chasing after other things. His value is in other things. And it's not God. And I could, did you hear what I read? The, the master comes and cuts him in two. Like cuts him in two. Who is the master? Jesus. And so we need to understand that Jesus is capable of cutting somebody in two. And so let's remember, he's not only our saviour, and he is a saviour. And I tell you, he's a good one. Come on. I said he's a good one. He's a good saviour. He's not only is he a good saviour, but he's also a judge. And he's just as straight and committed in his judgment as he is in saving you. And he is so committed to saving you, sir. He has demonstrated that. He's demonstrated that on the cross. Come on, you look what he went through and he did it for you. And so there's no question of his love and his commitment to you. But in his judgment, he is also committed. And if you and I don't live for him as savior, you and I will meet him as judge. Those are the only two options. You can't sit in the fence. That applies to all of us, me included, pastor included. And then it says there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That verse appears, I checked this out, it appears five times in the New Testament. And every time it applies, there's a context attached to it. And the context that is attached to it each time mentions that there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And it looks to me like it's only a certain category of person. A certain type of person. It seems to be those who have known all about it. Who have heard all the truth. You know, they've heard the truth. You maybe have been close to it all their whole life. 
but never really committed themselves to it. You know, and it's they that will be weeping and gnashing their teeth because they will realize in that moment that they were so close. They were so close to it. I was, I was so close all my life. I went to church. I don't know a lot. I could have stepped in there at any time. I, I could re- I'll remember that day in January 2022 when the pastor gave that call and that appeal for me to step into it. And I didn't do it. And there will be weep gnashing the teeth. <laughs> and I was so close. Appeal after appeal, I sat through them. And I never did it. And now I'm shut up and I'm shut up here forever and ever. And so I can understand why they would be weeping. I can understand why they would have gnashing of their teeth. Now is the time for, for salvation. You don't hang on, don't wait for You don't know what, we, what comes tomorrow. Come on. One phone call will change your world. And so the God of the creation calls you tonight. He's knocking on your door, knocking on the door of your heart. Do you hear him knocking on the 23rd of January, 2023? 2022. There's somebody coming next year. He says, Behold, I stand at the door, and if any man, any man, anybody, any man, any woman, he says, will hear me. If you'll hear me and open up, I'll come in. I'd love to have dinner with you. Love to make memories with you love to help you with your family and your kids and and do great things together. Aye, there was some bad days, you know what, but there's lessons in the bad days. Come on. Come on, let's bow our heads. Just wonder, is there somebody here? And you don't really connected with God you don't know him and he doesn't know you know you in that intimate way that way of friends you know and it's just maybe maybe there's somebody here today and maybe this is your time maybe all of this that I've been through this weekend is God pulling you Come, come. Well, if that's you this morning, you're 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 a believer. You're you're. If that's you this morning. Lift up your hand, and we'll see it. We'll pray with you. Is there one? Take that courage today. Is taking that step and go. You know what? I'm I'm going for you, God. Right? Maybe there's somebody here that's just you know I'm not even saved. I don't. I hardly even know what you're talking about but there's something in my heart busting in and, and, and response to what you're saying and, and I don't really understand it but I know that God is something speaking to me and I know that I'm not right with God but I would love to be I would love to be right with God if that's somebody here today just lift up that hand again we'll see it we're not trying to make a spectacle over we're just trying to say hey pastor I need prayer would you pray for me is there one this morning looking across it this congregation is there somebody looking out over 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 from this heart well we're going to leave that we're going to leave that with you Father we thank you for for loving us Lord we pray that you'll come with us in the journey we pray Lord that you'll give us faith and believing for the places that we find hard. And we pray, Father, that we'll be faithful. That we'll be not just a servant, but a friend. Help us to hear your word, Lord. Help us to hear, open up our spiritual ears, Lord, and our spiritual heart, that we might know you and walk with you in a whole new day. Thank you for these people, Lord. We love them, Father. And I just... We love them, Lord.
And I just pray, God, your blessing upon them, your blessing, God, your goodness upon them. And Lord, we ask that all in Jesus' name. Not in my name, but your name is an anointment poured forth, Lord, and it heals us, Lord. And so do that, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you all.